All clear. The world certainly seems to have been busy repairing itself after all the damage we dealt it. Yes, sir. Mother Nature certainly has her ways of bouncing back. It's been nearly 18 years since the Great Fall. And yet we're still hiding, Colonel. Why? You know what happened to the survivors, sir. They still roam these lands scavenging for supplies and fighting to survive. The world is not safe. Then we will make it safe. And how do you plan to do that? You will. Me? Yes, of course. Start small. Take a couple men and sweep the area. If you see anybody, kill them on sight. And slowly but surely, we will wipe away the last living remnants of this old world. Soon, every last living buffoon who's struggling to survive on this earth will be put out of their misery. This is how we do it. This is how we bounce back. Sir, what you are requesting will be no easy task. I know, and that's why you're the perfect man for the job. If we don't make this world safe, it will never be safe. I see your point, but in case you haven't realized, everything about the old world is gone. You're not even the president anymore, you're just... Yes, everything about the old world is gone, but I'm still here. And I know what I want. Don't test me, Sheldon. Just do whatever I say and you'll live. My request is simple. Get out there, kill anyone you see. <laughs> me and my wife, heck, everybody here is tired of being kept up in that little bunker. It's in the best interest of everyone here that you do what you're told. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Yes what? Yes, Mr. President. Nice. Now, get going. You, you three, are your weapons set and ready? Let's go.
Move in. Hey, get a lot of this. Someone heard us coming. Must have hit the road in a hurry. Hold it right there! I suggest you drop the weapon and back off. You better do what I say. Now. Who are you? You don't want to talk, eh? All right, I'm Sheldon. Colonel Sheldon Baines. It's nice to meet you. I'll cut the niceties and kill her already. Ah, uh, don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Hold it right there. You're not going anywhere. I said you're not going anywhere. You are with us now. What'd you do that for? She'll be fine. You're supposed to kill her. We're not going to kill her. Not yet, at least. Why not? Because I said so. You, pick her up. Let's go. Sir, I don't see how bringing her along benefits mission at all, if anything. Listen, I want it for questioning. President Knowles could get some valuable information out of her. Understood? Yes, sir. Well, then let's get going! We can stop here for now and refresh ourselves. We got a lot more ground to cover before we can head back. So where do we go now, Colonel? We'll move up and sweep the northern perimeters before checking the west. I thought we already checked the west. We did, but it never hurts to check again. You're addicted to your job, aren't you? If by addicted to my job you mean that I like to be thorough, then yes, I am indeed addicted to my job. No, he means you're just being stupid. Stupid? What the president don't know won't hurt him. Unlike you, I'm a colonel. More is expected of me than of you three stooges. Hey, watch it, buddy. The president gave me a job, and I intend to complete it. Thoroughly. Then why are we dragging the girl along with us then? I need her for questioning. There could be other people around here, more groups. She could have the answers. Uh-huh, sure. I think you're just hoping to win yourself a free girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. Hey, there's a reason the president never trusted you idiots. You're just a bunch of children. That's enough! I don't know what deep, dark crevice you drug that insane idea out of, but I suggest you shove it right back before I end the three of you. Relax, General. We're just trying to have a little fun. She's not my girlfriend. She's a living treasure trove of questions that need answering. What sort of questions? Can I have your number? <laughs> <laughs> one more flippant comment out of either one of you, and you'll be going to join your friend in hell. Hey, stop! You. You're not going anywhere, not just surrender! Sir! Sir! What? I don't see anything. There was something over there. Hey! No! Hey. No, no, no!
Colonel Sheldon Barnes, what news do you have for me? Over. They're all gone, sir. We were attacked. They're dead. All your men are, are dead. I'm, I'm the only one who survived. Report back to the bunker immediately, Colonel Barnes. Copy that, sir. 10-4. It's Baines. Colonel Sheldon Baines! In order for a female of your size and nature to find herself capable of loosening those bonds, you would need to be the lucky one out of precisely 457,091,762.3. I tied them myself. I am programmed to comprehend every type of knot in existence. You will not be getting away. That'll do, Sai. I will attend to our chemically created combustion, also known as a fire. Don't pay attention to him. He's a bit cheeky towards newcomers. His name is Sai. I'm Boyd Viotto. I know this is probably kind of strange, new to you. I mean, a boy and a robot. I am much more than a mere robot, Boyd Francis Viotto. I am a virtually perfect mechanical being with an independent mind and free thinking abilities. I was designed to absorb the sun's rays with my photovoltaic cells, generating direct current energy and. Sigh. Yes? That's enough. We can discuss that later. Don't you see I'm kind of in the middle of something right now? My apologies, Boyd Francis Viotto. I will desist for the time being. But if you would ever be in use of my flawless description of how solar energy works, just let me know. I'm sure we will. He's a... he's a bit dense. That is actually true. I am very dense. I weigh a small amount over 90 kilograms. I don't speak that. I apologize. 200 pounds. Soup. Thank you. You are welcome. Do you want any soup? Water? Food? Oh, so you can understand me. I was beginning to think you didn't. You were a bit... Unresponsive. There is a small chance that she is a mute. It is one of the unfortunate side effects of the radiation. I could run a diagnostic test on her brain. Sai? Leave her alone. As you wish. We're here to protect you. We saved you. Indeed we did. Those were President Knowles' men who had you. I don't know what they were doing out this far, but it can't be anything good. If it weren't for him, the war would have never happened. My parents would still be alive. It is acceptable to cry, boy. I wasn't gonna cry. Your cerebrum had registered sadness and was triggering emotional tears. There's no such thing happening. There is no use in denying it. Denial of emotional pain only leads to more emotional pain. Sai, only you can prevent forest fires. Go put out the fire, Smokey. Your tone of voice indicates frustration with me. I will be on standby. So, do you always look like you're ready to kill somebody? You've kept the same facial expression this entire time. 
even when you were knocked out. So, do you have a name? Okay, if you don't want to talk, that's fine. You're free to go. You aren't our prisoner. We saved you from those guys because we thought that you'd like to stick with us and, you know, survive together. We could use a, a girl, um, we could use another member on this team. It, it's just been Sai and I for so long. It gets so lonely. And he told me he thought you were cute, whatever that means. Sai! Is the fire out? Affirmative. I extinguished our chemical combustion per your request. Afterwards, I sensed that your frustration with me had subsided and calculated a good time to approach. Calculations were spot on, buddy. A machine like me has a nearly perfect internal processor. Therefore, the odds of my calculations being off are... Well, they are, as you humans put it, very slim. Dang straight. Oh, I saw that. We're smiling. Am I correct in my calculations of assumption when I say that she finds me humorous? Yes, sir. I am not a sir, nor am I a ma'am. I am a mechanical creation lacking gender of any kind. To assign a gender to me would be as absurd as... Hey, I think she loves you, buddy. I think she would be a better romantic fit for you. Because I am incapable of ever. <laughs> Rain. What? Huh? My name is Rain Carson. Sir, come here. Welcome back. Come. We have much to discuss. So tell me again. What happened out there? I've told you three times. Why do I have to keep telling you? Because all three times, you've lied to me. I want you to tell me the truth this time. You can't lie to me, Sheldon. Why even try? Because maybe you didn't need to know some of the details. I'm your president. You tell me everything. I told you already. We found some girl in the woods. We wanted to keep her for questioning. Then these guys showed up with gas bombs and stole her away from us. What happened to my three men? They're dead. Who killed them? The same guys that stole the girl from us. All three of them? Yes, I keep telling you! You lied to me! I killed one, alright? I killed one! Ah, <sighs> now there's the sweet, sweet truth I'm looking for. Why did you kill one? It was Private Quinn. He was aggravating me and making sarcastic comments. I shot him. But the other two did not die by my hand. I believe you, Colonel. I just don't know why you had to lie about the one. Because I knew you wouldn't like it, that I killed one of our own men. Our men? <laughs> They're not our men. They're my men. And you're dead right. I'm not happy that you killed one of my men, 
in cold-blooded murder. However, it was just one, so I'm not going to kill you for it. But even though it was just one man, you must learn the consequences to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Please understand, it's nothing personal. I too couldn't stand Private Quinn, but... You have to learn sometime. Yours? My apologies, Boyd Francis Zioto. Ow! Are we going to wake the female? Rain. Her name is Rain. I fail to see how her name affects the obvious actuality that she is of the female gender. And I fail to see why you deem it necessary to call her the female when she has a name. Rain. Scientific proof shows that dolphins name each other, but you humans never refer to them by their names. Yes, but she's not a dumb dolphin. And we know her name. Name or not, I require your response. Yes, you can go wake her up. Very well. Wake up, female. Wake up. What's Do not be alarmed. It is Sai, Boyd Francis Viotto's faithful bodyguard. My internal processor's scanner indicates that you remember me. I do. What are you doing? Oh, we're going on a run. A run? Yeah, there's plenty of useful supplies out by the ruins. I like to refer to our little missions as scavenger hunts. But Boyd Francis Viotto doesn't like that. He calls them runs. That's because scavenger hunts are games. These missions are but not referring games. to said missions as scavenger hunts adds a colorful addition to our otherwise dull-sounding duties. I kind of like the way scavenger hunt sounds, to be honest. Ha! Huh. The female has expressed agreement. You agree with this crazy machine? Hey, I'm just saying, scavenger hunt makes it sound cooler. Call whatever you like. Let's get going. There is much to accomplish. Uh, are we going to eat breakfast? Boyd Francis Viotto already consumed his morning meal while you were fast asleep. Yeah, uh, you were out cold. I calculate that you will have to wait until midday arrives before we are ready to dine again. Sorry. Shut up. Grab a wheat snap from the back and give it to her. As you wish. The secret recipe. The crickets and cockroaches add a rather delightful consistency to them, don't you think? So, uh, where to first? Oh, uh, we're gonna go get our ride. Ride? You'll see. I hope they didn't rough you up too much, Colonel. I merely intended for a point to be made. Oh, don't look at me like that. Considering all things, I'd say I'd let you off easy. But I still need you alive. You're a valuable asset, Colonel Barnes. 
I have big plans, Colonel Barnes. But before any of those plans can be a reality, I need you to go back out there and kill the girl and those two men who rescued her from your clutches. I fail to see how they affect anything, sir. They stand no chance against us. Then you should have no problem wiping them out. After all, they're just three people. You've handled much more. How many men can I take with me? Hmm. None. Sir! You've shown that you're very irresponsible working with my men. This one mission is for you and you alone. How will I stand a chance against them if it's just me? You'll have plentiful resources. Take as many weapons as you need in order to get the job done. And as indefinite pieces of proof, I want you to bring back all three of their heads. Understood. I need proof that the mission is completed, and seeing their heads will be quite sufficient enough. I trust that you will not fail me and do exactly as I've asked, Colonel Barnes. You'll find a way. You always do. Sir. It's Colonel Baines. Hope he didn't rough you up too bad. It would be such a shame to see the mighty Colonel Barnes brought down by such a minuscule beating. Your husband's walking on thin ice, Alyssa. He better watch his back. That's so cute. Did you just threaten to kill him? Someone's going to. He's made too many enemies. One day, you're going to find your husband dead on the floor of his office, and only you will mourn him. You know it's true. Any man who harms my husband will die by my hand. It's all too easy to watch your own back, Alyssa. But good luck watching your husband's, too. You know what? You better watch yours, because there's not too many people around here like you, either. We live in a ruined world, Alyssa. It's every man for himself. I'm not worried about being liked. Are you? Must be nice. Being married to the president. Getting to eat all that nice food. And wearing those ridiculous dresses. While the rest of us low lives live in squalor. My husband does what he can for you. He does nothing but give orders all day long. He has no sentiment, no compassion. He kills who he wants, when he wants. He is corrupt. You know what? He's your president. So obey him. Thank you. 
If it isn't Colonel Sheldon Barnes. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Baines. I heard you took quite the beating, which is something that I personally never had the pleasure of experiencing. Just get out of my way, Ivan. You get out of my way! Is there a problem here, Colonel? No, there's no problem. Go ahead. Hit me. Make my day. You wouldn't dare touch me. I'm a colonel. Ranks mean nothing anymore, colonel. Try me. That's what I thought! You coward! We needed a quick and easy way to navigate the radiation field and move from house to house quickly. So we made these. The, the hubble bikes, bikes are gone. gone. What? Oh. Hover bikes? Yeah, we had constructed them out of do widgets and doodahs, but uh, now they're gone. Do not pin this one on me, Boyd Francis Dioto. I warned you of the dangers of leaving your cold fusion-powered hover bikes out in such an unprotected area. We are not the only survivors in these parts. Let the record reflect that I warned you of this day. Well, I guess we're walking. Negative. Standing near a human male of his nature will only lead to furthering of his romantic feelings for you, which I sense you do not reciprocate. What? Any tension between the two of you could lead to unnecessary drama. Shy, quit talking nonsense. Let's go. You said we weren't the only survivors in these parts, Sai. What did you mean? There are inevitably more survivors like us within this vicinity. Yeah, but they're all filthy thieves and murderers who are not to be trusted. Uh, well, most of them anyways. Actually, I was part of another group before I joined you guys. Really? Yeah, but they were killed by a group of rivals, so now I'm on my own. I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. I would be too if I were human, but I am not. I am incapable of feeling anything. We know, Sai! stop is just ahead. Two-story building with a weather vane. Affirmative. What was that? The radiation field. Step back. We have to find a way around. We will just have to wait. Merely disrupting the blades of grass within close vicinity of said radiation field could result in a spread. What causes these to happen? I've never seen one before. It has something to do with the atmosphere and trapped bubbles of radiation under the Earth's surface. I don't know, ask Sai. He has all the technical explanations on it. Yes, of course. I would be beyond joyous to explain the science behind these phenomenal radiation fields. They were non-existent before the wars broke out. 
but the excessive use of nuclear and radiated weapons. How do you know so much? I beg your pardon? How do you know so much about everything? You're like a walking encyclopedia. He was programmed that way. He says that his manufacturers plugged him into the world's biggest computer before the whole world went downhill. That is correct. Well, for a high-class manufactured robot, you sure look pretty ragtag to me. I will not take offense to that. It's also funny how a high-class robot can remember so much but not remember anything about my parents. I've told you many times, Boyd Francis Viotto, your mother and father's melted bodies were lying at the foot of your crib, and you were on the very brink of death yourself. And you vowed to protect me and nurse me back to health. Yada, yada, yada. What did they look like? I am not very good with facial descriptions. You would not find my answers satisfactory. I'll find any answer satisfactory, you rusty bucket of bolts. You've been so evasive when it comes to answering any questions about that day! What were you even doing in my house? The traumatic experiences of that day in history do not need to be recounted, Void Francis Viotto. As you humans like to say, it is best that the past stay in the past. The radiation field appears to be dissipating. We should depart. I sense that he is agitated with me. Well, given that you refused to give him any answers and were a total maggot bag, I'm not surprised. Oh. Allow me to offer my assistance. No. Allow me. Here, make yourself useful, but... I will ignore the undoubtable fact that you are upset with me and begin to gather items of use. Just keep going! Mind if I stick with you? I do not mind at all. I am a machine, therefore I will not become flustered or anxious when an attractive female is by my side. I don't know about that. It is true. You are attractive. You are a robot. How could you know that? If Boyd Francis Viotto thinks it, then he is undoubtedly right. I have observed that he is a truly superb judge of female beauty. Boyd thinks it? He has spontaneously developed a passion. A what? An unintentional infatuation. Huh? As you humans like to ever so delicately word it, a crush. A crush? Old studies have found that feelings such as these can develop in under 900,000 milliseconds. I don't know what that means. Fifteen minutes. It must take longer for girls, though. Negative. My records reflect that certain females actually developed infatuations faster than males in most cases. Are you sure your records aren't faulty? My records are incapable of being faulty. And why is that? Wikipedia says that. Let's talk more work, Canhead! Perhaps we should reserve our discussions for a more opportune time. Boyd Francis Viotto seems to be in a rather foul mood.
Hey guys! You better come and get a look at this! Look! Are they... Affirmative. And still fresh. Living skin cells are still visible around the outer edges. Dang it! What's going on? Those claw marks were left by a prowler. Where there's one, there's usually more. What's a prowler? They're large and they're scary looking. Been roaming this land for the past 15 years. You mean those bluish things that look like people? Yeah, yeah. That's them. I've seen a lot of them out there. I normally use fire to scare them off. A prowler has exceedingly sensitive eyesight. Anything of significant brightness will frighten them away. Rain, get behind me. As you wish. That's weird. Could have swore I heard something from over there. Oh well. Guess it's just an overactive imagination. I heard it too. Maybe you're just being paranoid. Negative. My sensors indicate that there indeed was, and still is, a life form present. What? The robot's right, boy. It's time to turn over your weapons and surrender yourselves to me. You heard me. Turn over your weapons and surrender. Make it easier on yourselves. I think now would be an excellent time for me to explain the functions of solar energy. Sai, shut up! What do we do? What will it be? We refuse. We will not give ourselves up to a captor who is too cowardly to show himself. You wish for me to show myself? We do. Very well. But I strongly suggest you not try anything. I am loaded down with enough firepower to out the three of you in seconds. My sensors indicate numerous metallic objects strapped to the life form. He is telling the truth. Very well then. Come on out! You! Cyborg! Back away! Cyborg? How dare you? I am not a cyborg. A cyborg would be a mix of both organic and mechanical materials, whereas I am Shut merely... Shut up and do as I told you! Drop it, boy. I know, I know. Life's not fair. Which one of you's the leader? The cyborg? I am not a cyborg, sir, and I do think it would be ever so kind of you to stop Shut me. up! Who are you? I'm Colonel Sheldon Baines. I serve under President Aaron Knowles. I was sent on a mission to exterminate the last living life forms in this area. I found the girl, but then you two goofs showed up and ran off with her. So now I gotta kill all three of you. I beg your pardon. I am not a life form, therefore I believe that makes me exempt from said extermination. No, in fact, you can go first. Wait, 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 please, we can work something out. There is nothing to be worked out. It is President Knowles' orders. All three of you must die. Erin Knowles isn't technically president anymore. Everything from the old world is gone, lost forever. He's just some man in a bunker. Why do you take orders from him? He's the one who started the war, for heaven's sake. This is not a conversation I'm going to be having with you, boy. However, I will make you a deal. You and the cyborg can die quickly and painlessly. I am incapable of feeling pain. But the girl dies slow. I took a merciless beating on behalf of her, and it's only right that she doesn't get off this easy. No deal. The girl, the robot, and I are leaving this place alive. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. I would not press my hand if I were you. And why not? Because we're in the belly of the beast, my friend. 
Half a dozen night crawlers lie asleep within these walls. If you make me fire a shot in here, they will awaken and they will come searching. You're all gonna die either way, so why not take the easy and less painful route? I've gotten out of worse scrapes. Oh, you won't escape. The powerful radiation from the wars mutated them from their natural human state. An unfortunate part of their deviation includes close to limitless amounts of superhuman strength and speed. They will work together, they will hunt you without ceasing, they will find you, and they will tear the flesh from your bones while you scream for mercy, but there will be none. I do believe that Colonel Sheldon Baines has an excellent point. Surrendering is an acceptable alternative. What are you doing? Accepting our inevitable fate. Before I die, I would like to be privileged with the opportunity to explain the functions of solar energy. All right. You got 30 seconds. Understood. Solar energy is a process in which a solar panel absorbs the sun's rays with photovoltaic cells, generating direct current energy and then converting it into usable alternating current energy. 20 seconds! Duly noted. After this rather complex process, the alternating current energy flows through a central electrical panel and is distributed accordingly. 10 seconds! I operate solely off of solar energy. And your energy. point is? It gives me many abilities. Time's up! It is because of solar energy that I am able to do this. Sigh! That is what you wanted me to do, is it not? The noise! Oh. You and the female must clear the building and get to safety. I will stay behind to mash Colonel Sheldon Baines up and feed him to the prowlers. No, you're coming with us! I will catch up. Go. Internal processor is figuratively screaming for me to murder you, but Boyd Francis Leoto says senseless killing is wrong. What? It means that I will not kill you, but they might. Get back! Get back! 
I think we lost him. Or not! We can't keep going like this. My legs feel like rubber. Sai, you have to do something. Affirmative. Come on. He needs our help, Boyd. No, he can take care of himself. Come on. I'm going to help it. Wait, rain. See you use that solar powered crap now, eh? <laughs> That's what I thought! Now this time, right between eyes. What the? <sighs> you! Did you miss me? You crazy psycho! I think you broke my nose! That's not all I'm fixing to break. A well placed and rather swift kick to the nether regions should do the trick. Consider this a warning. Go back to your president and tell him that we will not be captured, threatened, or killed. He does not give failure as an option! Oh, well, then I guess you're out of luck, Colonel. Stay away from me and my friends. I would hardly consider us to be friends, female. More like vague acquaintances. Oh, shut up, Sai, before I tear your arm off. Side, she's unresponsive. We need to get her back to camp. Rain! Negative. Oh, no. We truly are in the belly of the beast now, as Colonel Sheldon Baines put it. Shut up. Shut up, Side. Let me think. Is there no way to safely navigate this field? It is not impossible. We would stand an insignificant yet real chance at successfully navigating the said field if my internal processor was functioning properly. Well, then I'll do it. We gotta get her out of here. If you successfully repair my internal processor to a temporary state, I should be able to calculate when and where each radiative arc will strike, thus mapping a safe path through the field. Come here, come on, let's get a look at it. All right, you're gonna have to help me out what I'm looking for here. Due to my severely damaged inner workings, I am unable to directly detect which part of my internal processor is compromised. Just look for something with significantly visible harm. Oh, I see it, I see it. Uh, now what? I am not a mind reader, Boyd Francis Viotto. You will have to describe to me in detail what the compromised piece looks like. There's a metal plate with a bunch of circuit boards and a bunch of wires on it. Are there any visibly damaged wires? Yes. You will need to repair that wire for my internal sensors to properly function again.
Alright, I got it taped. Affirmative. My internal processor is unstable but functioning. So how do we get out of here? We must tread with exceeding carefulness. Like I mentioned before, merely upsetting the blades of grass in this field could result in a spread. Which means... Our precise chances of escape would plummet from... Let's go! Follow me. processor is beginning to lose functionality. I can no longer chart a safe course. The radiative state of this field has drained my solar energy. But the end's right there! We're so close! I can divert the final segment of my energy towards charting your last few steps, but that would result in my imminent demise. You're gonna die? I am a machine. I cannot die. I will merely cease to be. But I can build you new parts. I can fix you. We can get new parts. We can, we can make this work. Negative. Once my energy has been entirely drained and your safe course has been successfully mapped, you will leave me behind and the radiation will liquidate my metallic body. No! Boyd Francis Viotto. No! It is the only way. You can't leave me. The female spontaneously saved me from Colonel Sheldon Baines. It is only polite if I return the favor, get her no, to safety, no. and nurse her back to you health. You can't do this! My sworn duty is to protect you, Boyd Francis Viotto, and that is what I'm no. going to do. Charting course now. Course charted. You can escape now. There is a clear path to the right through which you can... No! Glad to see you're alive and one piece. What happened out there? It's a long story. You were out for most of it. But I guess the important thing is that we are all alive. 
all of us except for him. Oh, you'll be fine. You just need some time to recharge and a few spare parts. And we'll get them, won't we? Of course. Good. You know, he's taken quite a liking to you. I thought he hated me. Nah, he's just skeptical of most people. But I trust you, though. You don't know me or anything about me. I could be a murderer and a thief for all you know. It could be considered foolish of you to trust me. It's my decision to trust you. It's up to you to prove me right or wrong. Fine. That group I ran with before Sheldon found me, we were slaves. I stole a laser gun from a guard and I killed him and his comrade to escape. So, in a way, I am a murderer and a thief. Later I found out that entire group had been killed by night crawlers. If I hadn't escaped when I did, I would be dead right now. So you tell me, who's the bad guy? What makes me any better than them? Look, Rain, we've all done things we're not proud of. And these days, survival is paramount. And we have to do the things that we have to. Boyd, I don't think you're thinking of me entirely objectively. What's that supposed to mean? Sai said you had developed an infatuation with me. A what? A crush. That crazy old rusty Ben doesn't know what he's talking about. He's right, isn't he? Look, you're the only girl around and I guess it's because I, I want to like you so much and I want to trust you so much that I do. It's hard to put into words. I mean, you'd think I'd be better at words having grown up with Sai. But you're right. I'm not thinking entirely objectively. I am biased in your favor. Is that so wrong? Do you not trust yourself, Rain? Rain? I'm afraid I've forgotten what that feels like. Rain? Do you trust me? Why? Because you saved my life twice when you stood to inherit no personal gain. And I trust you because you went back to save my best friend, even though he's a cantankerous, pretentious windbag. And I trust you because you're loyal, because you stayed when you could have left. And I trust you because you're more concerned about the hurt that I'd face for trusting you than the hurt that you'd face by not being trusted. You're an oddity, Boyd Francis Biotto. No one has wanted me for as long as I can remember. I've always walked alone. Well, I don't have to. Who us now? Me and Sai. Here, take this and keep watch. I am going out to scavenge for some parts. Yes, sir. Hey! Hey! Wait! Whoa! Hold your fire! It's me, Sheldon Baines. Why have you come? I need your help. 
How many life forms? Three. Well, two. A boy, a girl, and a robot. A robot? Yeah. They've been evading me for the past two days. I was questing with hunting them down and killing them. By who? President Knowles. You know how I feel about him, Sheldon. I know, I know. Believe me, I hate him as much as you do. But I desperately need your help. Why not just let them be and come out here and live with me? The world can be our kingdom. Stop taking orders from some guy in a hole that calls himself your president. Out here, there are no rules. I've worked my way up that food chain. I can't turn back now. I'm so close to having earned his trust. You can come back. If you help me kill them, President Knowles might let you come back. I can't go back, Sheldon. He killed my daughter. He gave me this. He almost killed me. I barely escaped. You think you're the only one who lost something? He's taken something from everybody. He has to die. I've almost gotten to where I need to be. Just a few more turns to the screw, then I'll be able to make my move and kill him. I can't help you, Sheldon. Even if it's for a good cause. But my offer still stands. Dolly, wait! I've been rushing from fight to fight for too long. I'm treated like a soldier, not a person. I haven't felt so much as a glimmer of happiness in over 10 years. Every night I toss and I turn and I can't sleep. I can't shut out who I've become, who the world has made me, who he has made me. I know that if we kill Aaron Knowles, take back that bunker, and begin rebuilding a life that benefits us all, I know I'll have what it takes to be happy again. I just know it. Help me, Dolly, please. I beg you. If you come with me and you help me, I'll let you kill Aaron Knowles yourself. You promise? If you help me annihilate my three targets, Aaron Knowles' death will come by your hand, and your hand alone. Deal me in. <laughs> now that is the dolly I remember from the wars. I prefer the name Dollface now. Still hiding behind false identities, I see. This is the most real I have ever felt, Sheldon. Don't deride me. I meant no harm, dolly. Dollface. You know why I wear this mask, right? No, not really. After Aaron killed my daughter and burnt her things, I managed to salvage some pieces from the furnace, one being her doll. I wear this piece of her doll's face so that I'll always have something to cling to and remember her by, something to keep me going. Here, you might need this. Betsy. <laughs> you haven't forgotten. How could I? I made her myself. Hand painted her and everything. This baby saw me through the war. Is that so? <laughs> With a little help from you, of course. Now let's go kill ourselves some fugitives. he comes by, and if we're disorganized, he'll have my head. It's Poppycock. You're doing a wonderful job. 
Um, darling? Do you mind? I'm working. <laughs> That's fine, whatever. I'll just, I'll just go over here. For me. My lord, I've just sent out my best man Sheldon Barnes to exterminate three lone survivors in the woods and bring back their heads. Good. This is the first step in our restoration, Aaron. I thought you'd be pleased. I will expect his return in a full report shortly. <sighs> Melissa, if you're gonna say something stupid, now is not the time. Yes, then it wouldn't be the time to tell you that your fly is unzipped. What? Deactivated right before Boyd rescued you from the radiation field. Boyd Francis Viotto? Where is he? He's out looking for spare parts to fix you with. Oh! We should stay here until Boyd gets back. My sworn duty is to watch out for and defend the very existence of Boyd Francis Viotto, and I intend to do just that. You're missing pieces! What if you malfunction? At least let me come with you. Affirmative. Your presence could prove itself useful. You know, it was me who saved your skin back there. I am a machine. I do not have skin. My surface is metallic. It's an expression, silly. That colonel was gonna kill you, and I saved you. I will you. not deny the obvious fact that you barely managed to defend my existence from certain well, doom. Well, thanks for that. You are welcome. So where to first? Boyd Francis Viotto's favorite location to search for old and unused robotic and or mechanical parts is most definitely the creek bed. So, the creek bed first. Affirmative. Why do you always call him by his full name? Boyd Francis Viotto? Yeah, why don't you just call him Boyd? Primarily because it suits him so well. 
But Boyd is much easier to say. I am never the machine to take the easy route. You can say that again. If I ask you a question, will you answer truthfully? It depends on the nature of said question. Fair enough. What do you think of me? That is truly a very broad question, but I will give you my best answer nonetheless. I think that you are a rather pleasant female with a stale sense of humor but a good heart. I was justifiably skeptical of your presence when boys spontaneously took you in, but you have unexpectedly proven yourself invaluable. So that's good then? I would say it is. And what do you perceive of me? I think you're a stuck-up, no-doll robot who thinks the world is his footstool. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think you're a robot who pretends to be a tough guy on the outside, but deep down inside, you're just a big softie. Hmm. As I said, stale sense of humor. see him anywhere. He is most assuredly close by. I will utilize my senses to scan for nearby life forms. I sense that there are multiple life forms nearby. Multiple? Three to be precise. Three? They could be more soldiers working for President Nose. How close are they? Two of said life forms are observing us from that inconspicuous cluster of vegetation across the creek. And the third? Approaching rapidly on your left. Guys! Oh, whoa! Hold your fire! I thought you were one of President Knowles' men. I guess I should have announced myself sooner. Hey, Sai, I have all the parts. We can get you functioning properly in no time. I am currently functioning effectively enough to inform you that two mysterious life forms have hidden themselves across the creek and are observing us. What? Do I know what they are? Soldiers? Prowlers? Nightcrawlers. Huh? That colonel guy called them nightcrawlers. I like it better. Is this really the time for this now? I'm just saying. Uh, come out with your hands up and your weapons down. We have the drop on you. My senses indicate that the life forms are no longer there. Well, then, where are they? Behind you. It's still stuck! Thought I was gonna give up, didn't you? What do you want? You know what I want. I made my purpose quite clear. I am going to kill all three of you. Why? Because of President Knowles? Yes. And if you knew anything about him, you'd know why I must do it. You don't have to kill us. We can make a deal, Colonel. There is no deal to be made. I promised him that I'd bring back all three of your heads. It's the only way to... To... To what? Quiet! It's the only way to earn his trust. I'm not killing you because I want to. I'm killing you because I have to. This is the only way. President Aaron Knowles has to die. Now let us help. We hate him too. You can help by staying still and making it easier for yourselves. It'll all be over soon. No, wait, please! Please don't kill her. She's, she's all that I have left. Please, please don't kill her. 
We can work something out. I promise. We can do this. We can, we can kill him. Just please. Please don't kill her. You'd be willing to help us? Yes. Yes, we hate President Knowles as well. He is the human being who started the nuclear war. Therefore, he must be killed so as to prevent any further damage. We'd be taking a great risk. I know. But we could use the extra hands. We will help you. We hate President Knowles, too. We have no reason to lie to you. But you have to promise to let us go when the deed is done. I ain't promising you that, girl. Then promise me something. But no matter what happens, that she won't get hurt. We will decide what to do with the three of you after you have helped us on our mission and after President Knowles is dead, not until. I cannot believe that we've resorted to forming these shifty alliances, Boyd Francis Fioto. It's the only option we have. Either we help them and live, or we don't help them. And they kill us now! There were never any assurances that you'd live. We said that we'd decide what to do with you when the mission is done. But you said you'd promise! I did not! In fact... <laughs> <laughs> did you actually think I was gonna show you? <laughs> Uh, we're not gonna hurt you guys! If you agree to help us take out President Knowles, and we succeed, you'll all be free to go. There's no reason to harm you. All we want is to kill him and save this world from all the pain he will cause it. Just tell us what we need to do and how we're gonna do it. I am justifiably mistrustful of this crew, but I am obligated to affix myself to it. For Boyd Francis Viotto's sake. And who are you? His father or something? Actually, I'm his loyal guardian and sworn protector. So what happened to his parents? Did you bash in their skulls? I won't have you talking that way, woman. His mother and father were both brutally slain in the war. Well, how did he magically survive? Did you just show up and save him? I strongly suggest you quickly silence yourself before your skull caves in on your frontal lobe due to a severe head trauma. Is that a threat? I rarely make threats, woman. Just promises. All right. The fight isn't out here. It's in President Knowles' bunker. I don't think you understand what we're going up against. There's only a handful of us, and there's a heck of a lot more of them. But what they have in numbers, we have in grit. We're going to fight, and we're going to win. Because if we don't, It'll be a real cataclysm. With all due respect, Colonel Sheldon Baines, she disrespected me. Save it, cyborg. We have much to plan and much to discuss. Are we all in agreement? We will all work together to infiltrate President Knoll's bunker, take out as many guards as we can, and ultimately kill him. Good. Let's start planning. since I sent Colonel Barnes out to exterminate those three survivors, and he still hasn't come back yet. Maybe he just needs more time. I've given him two days. Lord Kaiba grows impatient. Just tell Lord Kaiba to give you more time. Patience is not his strong suit. If Colonel Barnes does not return in the next couple of hours, I will have to send out a small group to go find him. I hope not. He was the last high-ranking officer in my militia. To lose him would be a searing blow to this group's survival. Oh, it's okay. Like, we'll make it work. We always do. Please understand. I don't want to do the things that I do. I don't want to kill the people that I kill. 
I'm doing what I have to so we can survive. If I don't obey Lord Kaiba, he will destroy us. Well, so just have to keep the chin up then. Can take care of it. I'm always up. Sir, an encrypted transmission from Lord Kaiba is trying to get through. Thank you, Corporal. Aaron No. My lord. Is the deed done? Has your man returned with the heads of our enemies? He has not. Maybe he just needs- More time? There is no such thing as more time under my jurisdiction. Yes, Lord. If Sheldon Baines doesn't return by sundown, then this will be counted as a failure, and someone will by choice, and that bunker will have to die. Lord Kaiba, please be patient. I know not the meaning of the word patience. I will call again at sundown, and I expect a full report on the situation and the honest truth. If Sheldon Baines has not returned, I will personally come to that bunker and oversee the death of someone you care about very deeply. Believe me, Lord Kaiba, we will kill the three survivors. This is not good. We have to reach Colonel Barnes and get him back here immediately. Colonel Sheldon Barnes, this is President Nobles. I request an immediate response. Over. Colonel Sheldon Barnes, do you read me? President Knowles' bunker has a very complex interior. The main trouble will be getting inside. There's only one entrance or exit. It's a metal hatch in the middle of the forest floor. And, uh... That, that hatch doesn't open unless the president himself lets it be open. And it, it's, it's built to withstand any and all nuclear blasts, so, so just punching through it is, is simply not an option. So what kind of locks does he use to keep the hatch shut? A hyper-focused and magnetized bar lock. The only way to get the magnets to release is to push a master button, which is located on the inside. So hypothetically, if President Knowles and his men were trapped outside and the hatch slammed shut, there'd be no way for them to get back in. No, I used to live there. You have to hit the master button again to lock it. Someone always has to be on the inside for the security measures to work. That is correct. The master button controls it all. If we had a teleporter, we could teleport inside and push the button. But sadly, that technology stopped development at the beginning of the war. So our biggest problem will be getting inside. You are fully capable of being let through, Colonel Sheldon Baines. Well, that's true. But getting all the rest of you in will be a problem. Once you get inside, just don't push the master button again. Leave the hatch unlocked. Yes, that could work, and then we come in right after. But I'm not the one who pushes the master button. It's some kid named Jimmy. Then take him out and leave the hatch open for the rest of us. <sighs> I like the way you think. So you get in, take out the master button, kid. We slip in behind you, and then what? President Knowles has guards patrolling the halls, day and night. Getting you through them will be the next bit of trouble. Colonel Sheldon Barnes, this is President Knowles speaking. I request an immediate response. Well, Over. speak for the devil. Ugh. Colonel Sheldon Barnes, do you read me? Over! This is Colonel Sheldon Baines speaking. Over. I need you back here before sundown. Have you completed your mission? Yes, sir. I, uh, I killed all three of them. And their heads? Cut off and in the bag. Please report back to this bunker as soon as possible. 10-4. Excellent. Now he's expecting me. I see he still can't pronounce your name right. And what about those three heads you promised him? Yeah, we'll just tear off some bundles of my cloak and throw it in the pack to simulate the heads. That's a small problem, though. Doesn't the president have, like, two personal bodyguards? Yes, right outside his office. But they trust me. They'll let me pass. You said I could kill him myself. Uh, you will, Dolly. I swear. I, I promise you will. But getting you inside the office is going to be a real hassle. But what about the ventilation system? The what? Vent shafts. There's got to be vent shafts, right? Well, yes, there are several. And the door to the president's office, is it manual or electronic? Electronic? What are you getting at? So if we were to cut the power to the door, 
We could barricade the door after we crawl through the vents. Then we could kill the president from inside, crawl back through the vents, turn the power back on, and when the guards come back in, they find the president dead, and we are no longer in sight. We are running free. I concur with Boyd Francis Vioto. His spontaneous plan seems rather foolproof. It could work. I like it. Cyborg, are you knowledgeable on how to operate power generators? Again, I am not a cyborg, but merely a machine. Affirmative. I am knowledgeable good, on good. such matters. So we'll need you to be in charge of that. And don't just cut the power to the doors. Cut the power to the entire bunker. Duly noted. Dolly, you need to get into the electrical room with Cy. If you see any guards, just kill them. Don't let them trip the alarm. Then you need to find the grate. And after the power is killed, get through the grate, into the air ducts, crawl to the president's office, come in, kill him, and then we'll escape. What about me and Boyd? You two will stay in the halls and guard. Make sure that no soldiers come by. If you see any, just kill them. Kill as many as you can. And do it quietly. Don't use your laser guns. Once Dolly and I have cleared the air ducts, Cy will reinstate the power, and then we'll escape. I find this plan acceptable. Good, good. However, there is one singular problem. What's the problem? It is my sworn duty to defend and protect the life of Boyd Francis Vioto. I will not Listen, comply Listen, Smarty, your... we don't have time for your games. It is not a game. Listen, Rusty. My name is Cy, not Cyborg, not Rusty. Oh, <laughs> someone's angry. I am not angry. I am incapable of expressing and or feeling such human emotions as anger, sadness, or fear. Okay, okay. Cy, we desperately need your cooperation on this mission. If you require the mission to go smoothly and as planned, I Cy, will Cy, enough! I don't need your protection. I can take care of myself. Negative. It is my sworn duty to protect and defend you. Come on, Cy. Let's go for a walk. Affirmative. Well, that's just great. The robot won't do diddly squad unless he's babysitting the kid. They have some kind of weird bond. You can say that again. Sai, you're going to have to realize that there are going to be times, many times, where you are not going to be able to protect me like the way that you want to. Negative. I will never leave your side, boy Francis Biodo. But Sai, you're going to have to. This mission requires us to separate. You need to go tend to the power. I need to go guard the hallways. But no! I don't want to be babysat anymore. I don't need to be protected. You may not want it, but it is my sworn duty. You keep saying that, but why is it your sworn duty to protect me? Why? I cannot say. Another secret? Oh! Does it have something to do with my parents, perhaps? That information is classified, Boyd Francis Vioto. Fine! I don't care about it anyway. Just realize this. When we infiltrate that bunker, you and I are not going to be together. I have my mission and you have yours. I cannot leave you. Well, you're gonna have to! My programming forbids it. You're lying. There is no aspect in your programming that forces you to protect me. I've seen inside your head. There's no servitude, Chips. So what is this? What? You have nothing to say? I... I have no response. Because you know I caught you in the act of lying. Come on, let's crack that head open and see what else you're hiding in there. I cannot let you do that. But why not? Negative. That's not an answer, Cy. Tell me what you're hiding. Negative. No! You tell me what you're hiding, you filthy, rusty piece of garbage. Boy, Francis, the open storm. I hate you. I hate you so much. I thought we were friends! You, you never tell me anything! You think that you think that you're protecting me by keeping secrets, but no, you're hurting me! You want to know what I've been hiding? Very well. 
Sai, this message is for you. Boyd is hidden safely in the cellar, inside the secret room that we showed you. His father went out earlier, right before the bombing started, and I haven't seen him since. I just hope he's okay. This is probably the end. I'm so glad we managed to finish you just before everything went downhill. Take care of my son. Please. Raise him as best you can. Keep him safe. Once your battery is charged and you activate again, you will find this message programmed inside your internal processor and also on an SD card inside your head. Promise yourself that you will defend him with your life. You are to be his sworn protector and defender. Do what you can to help him survive. I know it won't be easy, but don't ever leave his side. Take care of Boyd Francis Fioto. Is that my mother? Affirmative. She and your father created me for the very purpose of protecting you and seeing you safely through the war. You and I remained in the secret room of the cellar for three long years. I fed you the food that they had stored up and used LED battery light bulbs to barely keep my solar energy alive. Before the war broke out, your father had plugged me into a computer and downloaded the entire internet database onto my hard drive so that I would know how to successfully care for you and survive. So you lied to me. You said that my parents died. You said you saw their dead bodies at the foot of my crib. But no, that's not the case. You knew them. You knew me. They were the ones who built you! Affirmative, but- Why didn't you ever tell me this? Where in that message did she say never to tell me this? She said to protect and defend you. There are more ways than one to protect someone, Boyd Francis Vieira. You thought that keeping the truth from me would protect me? Affirmative. Well, thanks for all that you've done, Sai. You are welcome. But I've reached a point in my life. Your services are no longer required. <laughs> 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 Where's the cyborg? I deactivated him! What? We don't need him. I can disable the power and you can guard the halls. We don't need Psy! Even I didn't like the hulkish hunk of metal, but Listen, I can still he, admit he would have been useful in He is not cover. coming! We do not need Psy! Okay, chill, buddy! No need to get all uptight. Well, does everyone understand the plan? Do we all know what our part is? Yes! All right then. Let's get going. Come on! Don't need painful reminders. heads as requested. Now, three of you wait out here until I give a signal and you come in after me. Hey, wait, Sheldon. What? 
What? What's the signal? Oh, shoot. Uh, a whistle. When you hear me whistle, then you come in. Got it? Gotcha. Hey! Open up this hatch! Uh, identify yourself. Identify myself? Listen here, you warped walrus! It's Colonel Sheldon Baines! Number 454324. Now open the infernal hatch! Sorry, Colonel. I'm required to verify all entries and exits. It's an order by the president. Well, surely you recognize my voice. Sorry, I still need identification. You've been working here 10 years and you still don't recognize my voice? Sorry, I, I still don't... That's the signal. Perfect. We're all here. Boyd, Dollface, cut the power. Give me at least five minutes. I need to be inside his office. Rain, take care of the guards. I'll take care of Excuse me, Ivan. Where are you going in such a hurry, Colonel? President Knowles sent me on an urgent mission. I am to report back to him immediately. So you're the President's personal sleaze, hopping around from place to place, doing his bidding. Like a good little boy. I prefer the term high-ranking and trusted officer, which is something you couldn't say for yourself. Watch it, Baines. Watch it. You'll always be stuck serving someone. You're always gonna be someone's little puppet. There should be a main power switch around here that can be flipped to kill the power to the entire building. It's been about four minutes. We gotta wait a little bit longer before we can throw that switch. Just stand by while I go find the air duct grate.
Oh, thank heavens. Colonel, I'm so glad you're back. Prepare to cut the power when I say. Copy that. I'm not lying to you. You didn't kill those three survivors. I did, but the proof is sitting right on your desk. You cannot keep your hidden truths from me, Sheldon. You have betrayed me! Now! Colonel Barnes, you filthy traitor. I might have known you tried to deceive me. Sir, I don't know what you're talking about. The heads are in the satchel, per your request. Why do you persist with these lies? You know you can't lie to me. My cybernetic implants know the truth. What reason would I have to lie to you? That's what greatly disturbs me, Colonel. Your intentions are unclear, but your plans to deceive me will not work. Oh yeah? And what are you gonna do about it? Perhaps I should contact Lord Kaiba and have him come here and execute you himself. Colonel Barnes. For my dead body. And it's Colonel Sheldon Barnes! Ah. <sighs> 
Think of what you have, Colonel. Think of all that you're throwing away. What I had was taken from me by you! Killing people. Hey, you did what you had to. Survival is paramount, remember? There have only been two times where I found myself willing to kill somebody. The first time was when Sheldon's men were trying to harm you. And the second time was just now. You bring out a side of me that I didn't even know I had. You've always had it, boy. It just took the right circumstances to bring it out. Come on. Our friends need us. You can bet that your death will be slow and torturous. Dolly Pierce? That's doll face to you, President. You 
Join forces with them, Colonel. Do the honors, Dolly. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't blow your brains to bits right now. After all you did, killing my daughter and starting the war? I may have killed your daughter, but I didn't start the war. That was Lord Kaiba. So you expect me to believe that after all this time, you've just been a puppet working for some higher power? He's the one who started it all. I didn't want any part of it. I didn't have a choice. Spare me, I beg of you. Spare you? Like you spared my daughter? I think not. Right before you arrived, he used this to contact Lord Kaiba. He's probably on his way here right now. We must leave. Did you know about this Lord Kaiba person? I, I... You did, and you didn't tell us. It wasn't important. I think it was. There is some other guy out there who has been controlling, behind the scenes, every move the President Knowles made, and we need to wipe him out as well. You can't. And why not? I think you just wanted to use us to help you kill the president so that Kaiba could promote you to be the new top dog instead. Better watch it, Dolly. You're playing with fire. Why? Because I figured out your whole grand scheme? President Knowles may have needed cybernetic implants to tell when you were lying, but I don't. You should just leave now. You're not any part of this. Just leave me Boyd and Rain. You're gonna force me to do something drastic, Dolly. Back out while you still can. I've waited too long for this moment to arrive. What moment? When you can kill President Knowles and take your place as Kaiba's personal puppet? I've done what I came to do. Let's go, kids. Stop, Dolly. I'm warning you for the final time! Get in that corner. Keep your hands where I can see them. Move! What is your problem? I don't have a problem anymore, Boyd. My problem's lying dead in the corner over there. You're crazy. Think about what you're doing. I have for many years. I've waited for this moment for long enough. And it feels just as amazing as I imagined it would. Look, just let us go. No, you two are an essential part of my plan. When Lord Kaiba arrives here soon, shortly, I will inform him that you broke into this base, single-handedly fought through the guards, and murdered President Knowles in cold blood. I managed to apprehend you, and here we are. It's a mighty fine plan, Sheldon, but you forgot two things. Oh, really? What two things? For one, you're never supposed to explain your plan to your adversaries. Well, I'm not worried about that. Oh, you should be, because that's number two. You forgot to disarm us. Any last words? Now don't go killing my colonel. That would be a real shame. I'll take those weapons now, thank you. Come, come. I'm not the type to ask twice. Very good. Now, explain to me why you deemed it necessary to kill Aaron Knowles. It wasn't enough, sir. It wasn't? It was Sheldon! He was trying to take the position of president for himself. Well, good for Sheldon. He was right to kill Aaron Knowles. 
That old fool was weak and useless, and his wife is annoying as the day is long. Remind me to execute her before I leave. So, I get to be the new president? Of course you do. If you are strong enough to kill Aaron, then the position is most definitely earned. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. I will, I will serve you well. Oh, I know. That's why I'm not killing you where you stand. So, if you two didn't come to kill Aaron Knowles, why are you in this base? It was him! He brought us here to help him kill the president! Rubbish. Sir, we're telling the truth! My child, you can't possibly expect me to believe you. The facts are staring you right in the face. Of course not, my dear. Your husband was a silly man, but I never would have gone as far as to kill him. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for you. Guard the woman. I'll get the children. You 
heard me. Boy! 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 Francis Vioto and the female alone, or I'll snap your vertebral column like a silver maple twig. Sigh. Hello, female. Thought you guys could use some backup. Dolly. Come on, kid. Let's get him out of here. Inform me as to why I shouldn't just fold your Cossacks right over your cubita. If you're gonna talk, robot, at least speak English. Leave the Latin to the Romans. I just asked you to give me a reason why I shouldn't fold your butt over your elbows. Bring it on, you malfunctioning hunk of rust. Oh my. My senses detect that you have urinated in your pants. This is your only warning. Stay clear of me and my friends. Stopped and, and the wound is cauterized, but it's really deep. Is he gonna make it? I don't know! Boyd Francis Vioto, can you hear me? Sorry. There is no need to be apologetic, Boyd Francis Vioto. I understand your frustrations with me. Sai, this message is for you. Boyd is hidden safely in the cellar, inside the secret room that we showed you. His father went out earlier, right before the bombing started, and I haven't seen him since. I just hope he's okay. This is probably the end. I'm so glad we managed to finish you just before everything went downhill. Take care of my son. Please. Raise him as best you can. Keep him safe. Once your battery is charged and you activate again, you will find this message programmed inside your internal processor and also on an SD card inside your head. Promise yourself. You will defend him with your life. You are to be his sworn protector and defender. Do what you can to help him survive. I know it won't be easy, but don't ever leave his side. Take care of Boyd Francis Fioto. I love him. Regretfully, the footage glitches out right there. I could never get it to play any further. I know he'll grow up to be a fine young man with you as his protector. But there will come a time soon 
when he will no longer require your protection. If you raise him well, he should be able to survive on his own by the time he is 16. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to leave his side. I want you to be there for him always. Just as I would have... <laughs> They're here. We will come back from this, Shorten Beans, and we will hunt down the boy, the girl, and the robot. We? No, no. There is no we. What are you talking about? I've come this far. Why stop now? This all ends now. There's no more President Mills. There's no more Lord Titan. You end now. Sorry, I'm no. so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. No, Are you okay? no, you're you're good. I'm so glad you're all right. I'm glad to be all right. You are one tough cookie, kid. You successfully survived a severe abdominal impalement. I am inclined to agree with the woman. Sigh. I'm sorry for what I did. I, I, I didn't mean to. I don't hate you. It was merely your inability to find a rational placement of your emotions. They manifested themselves in anger and my ultimate deactivation. I'm sorry. All is forgiven, boy Francis Viota. Okay, Sai. Thanks. To phrase it in the words of a human, <laughs> don't sweat it. I've been monitoring the female's heart fluctuations. What does that mean? She refuses to admit it, but I think your feelings are reciprocated. Uh, thanks, buddy. By the way, how long was I out for? Roughly 37 minutes short of 23 hours and 56 minutes of a full day. And the female barely left your side for a second of it. You know, that Kaiba guy isn't going to sit around all day. He and his men are going to come looking for us. I know. And when he does, 
It'll be a real cataclysm. Yeah. 